In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to create a LEGO walk cycle in Blender. To create an animation like this, you'll need to download Blender and either download or create your own minifigs and sets by going to mechabricks.com and downloading from the Mechabricks library or make them yourself using the workshop on their website, with the file saved as .zmbx files. You'll also need to download the Mechabricks Lite add-on from the Mechabricks shop and also download the Epic Rig Fig add-on and install both of those in Blender. The links to these will be in the description. Damn it! I own Sonic Jam! It's a pretty rare game, but I don't want to be known as the guy who owns Sonic Jam when I'm dead. So let's open up a brand new Blender project and delete the default cube, light, and camera by selecting them all and clicking X. Now with the Mechabricks Light add-on installed, you can now go to File, Import, and you can select the .zmbx option. Click this and then find your background set and your minifig and import them both into your Blender project. I'm using the advanced paid for version of this add-on, hence why it looks a little bit different, but you can get away with using just the light version for this tutorial. With those both imported, I'm just going to hide my background set and then I'm going to select all the various parts of my minifig. And with the Epic Rig Fig add-on installed, I can now click on the Epic Rig Fig tab here, and then I can just click the Rig Selected Minifig button, and there you go, you've now got a rig on your character. So when you select the rig and then go into Pose Mode, you can move around the various parts of the minifig. Simply click on a bone of the rig and then move it by clicking either the G key to grab it or the R key to rotate it. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Now to start this walk cycle, you need to move the minifig with the epic rig fig. So to do this, click on the rig and then go into pose mode. Now I want my minifig to walk from left to right on my set. So I need to move it into the position at the left and side of my set and also have my minifig rotated. To move the whole minifig, select the bottom master bone here with the G button. And then click either the X, Y or Z buttons after clicking G to move it on that axis. Then to rotate it with the master bone, select it and then by clicking the R and Z keys on your keyboard, you can then type in the number 180 and flip it 180 degrees. And with my minifig moved into place, I can now start animating. And to make the maths easier for this tutorial, I'm going to have my start frame on zero as opposed to one, which Blender has by default. And I'll be animating on 24 FPS for this tutorial. So I'm going to start off by selecting the right leg bone here and click I. And then when this box appears, I'm going to select location and insert my first keyframe. I'll then move it forward so it's in between these two stud pieces here. And I'll repeat this step with my left leg bone selected and move it behind my minifig's body and in between these two studs. And so this will be the starting pose for the minifig. And if you turn this record button on here, then your keyframes will be added automatically after you've inserted the first frame on each of the rig's bones. Next, select the hip bone here and insert a keyframe on frame zero and then move forward seven frames and drag it forward using G and Y until the right leg is over this stud here. Then go back to frame six and select the left leg bone and insert a keyframe by clicking I and selecting available when this box appears and then go to frame 13 and move it forward so it's now facing in front of the minifig. Then on frame 13, select the hip bone and move it forward till the legs facing front and back are between these two stud pieces. Feel free to alter the left leg's position to align this better on the previous keyframe. And if we play that back, we've now got our first step on this walk cycle. Now select the right leg and insert a keyframe on frame 13. Then go to frame 20 and insert a keyframe on the hip bone and move the hip until the left leg is over this stud here. Then go back to frame 19 and insert a keyframe on the right leg and then go to frame 26 and move the right leg forward like so. Then to close it off, select the hip bone on frame 26 and move the hip forward to the legs are between these studs. And just like that, my minifig is now in its original pose, but has moved forward along my background model. And so now you can just repeat these steps if you wanted to over and over by adding the number 26 to the frame numbers I've previously used on the legs and hip bones, as the legs and hip bones are in the same position as they were at the start, just moved slightly up the set. But a way that I find easier is to go to frame 26 and select the legs and hip bones, and then insert a new keyframe so that each bone's animation reaches the same endpoint, and then do the same for frame 25. Then select all of the bones again and copy all of the keyframes up to and including frame 25 with Command C, and then paste them with Command plus V 
and then move those new keyframes onto frame 26. Now on frame 26, obviously we are now back in our original position, but if we just select the master bone, we can go to frame 25 and add in a keyframe. And then on frame 26, we can then grab the minifig using the master bone and move it forward along the set. So we have it back into its previous position. And then we have the next couple of steps sorted for the rest of the walk cycle. And then you can just keep selecting all of these bones and just copy and paste as many times as you want, as long as you move forward the master bone at the various points where it reverts back to the starting position. I'm going to repeat this a couple more times till my model reaches the end of the set. A man has fallen into the river in Lego City. Start the new rescue helicopter. Hey! Now to make the walk cycle look a lot less robotic, I'm going to need to add in some more movements with the other bones on the minifig. So let's start off with the arms and this section is actually quite simple. Select the right shoulder bone here and add in a keyframe and then rotate the arm behind the body on frame zero. And then go forward to frame 13 where the right leg is also behind the body and simply rotate the arm forward. The basic rule of thumb is to have the arm in the opposite direction of the leg that is on that side of the minifig. So I'm just going to repeat rotating the arm throughout the rest of the walk cycle during these crossover points with the legs. I'm not going to copy and paste the keyframes as I want this to be more in line with the Lego movie style of animation and these little imperfections will help sell a style that's emulating stop motion animated brick films. Then I'll do the same thing by selecting the left shoulder bone but with the arm rotated in front of the body on frame zero and then moving it back and forth throughout the rest of the walk cycle animation. And now it's time for the body. Select the chest bone and on frame zero insert a keyframe and have the body leaning back by clicking G and then on frame seven, move the body forward. Similar to the arms, the bodies need to have a general consistency to its position throughout the walk cycle. When a leg is in front of the minifig's body, have the body leaning back. And when the legs are about to overlap, have the body leaning slightly forward to bring balance to the walk cycle. And then just repeat this throughout the rest of the animation. And then for the last section, if you want to, you can rotate the head. Just select the head bone here and then click R and drag your cursor slightly to rotate the head around and just repeat this sporadically throughout the animation. And with that, the actual animation for this walk cycle is now complete. Bionicle is blasting the f off with crazy ass mother wings and weapons and unbelievable new choking hazards. Okay, now let's set up a camera. In object mode, click shift A and add in a new camera and place it wherever you want. Make sure you scale it up as your Mechavix models are quite large in size. For the settings on the camera, I had the focal length settings at 74 millimeters. I went to the aperture settings and went for 0.01 on the f-stop, zero on both the blades and rotation, and set the ratio to two. Then I clicked depth of field and added in an empty box to my scene and placed it around my minifig and set that as my focus object. And I'll move this empty along with my minifig throughout the animation. I did this by just adding keyframes throughout the walk cycle and moving it along the walk cycle path. Next, let's add in an HDRI image to give the scene some cool natural lighting, as I'm going for a stop motion slash Lego movie look to this scene. I downloaded this one from polyhaven.com, which I'll leave a link to in the description. Select the world tab in your project and click this button next to the color tab and scroll up until you see the environment texture option. Then click the new button here Find your HDRI and select it. And when looking through the render preview view of your project by clicking this button here, you can see the light interacting with the scene. To fill out the scene within my viewport, I'm going to select my set and join all the pieces together. And then I'm going to add an array modifier to my background model set and repeat it so it fits the entire frame of the camera. I'm also gonna move it slightly to the right. For my render settings, I'm using the cycles engine to go for that realistic look. I've set my noise threshold to 0.4 and the max samples to 256 and the time limit to 30 seconds as well as clicking the denoise button checkbox. In memory I checked the used tiling box and reduced the number to 256. I also went to the light path settings and reduced all of these numbers. I then went to paths and made sure I selected denoising data and then I went back to the output tab and set the file format to PNG and created a folder by clicking this button here to render my files into. I'm no expert on if these settings are the best for a slower machine. So if you have any recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments. I would really appreciate it. And now you just need to render your animation using the Cycles render engine as an image sequence. 
and bring it into your compositor of choice. Now, my compositor of choice is Adobe After Effects, but there are free alternatives available as well. To bring my files into After Effects, I'm going to import my files as an image sequence. So I'll go to File, Import, and then select as one of the images in my rendered folder, and make sure the Create PNG Sequence box has been ticked before importing. Then when it's imported, I'll set the sequence to the same frame rate that I animated on, which in my case was 24 frames a second. So I'll right click over my image sequence in the project tab here, and then I'll select interpret footage, and I'll change this number to 24 frames per second. Then I'll drag my image sequence down to this comp icon here, and that'll create a brand new composition that matches my image sequence's image size, duration, and frame rate. Now I would recommend adding an adjustment layer into the composition and adding in a posterized time effect to halve the frame rate down to 12 frames per second, as this will make the animation look a bit more like a traditional stop motion animated brick film. But if you like the smoother look of 24 frames per second, then this is totally optional. You can animate at any frame rate you like. And just like that, I now have my Lego Blender walk cycle animation completed. And that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to click that like button and consider subscribing. And if you haven't already, feel free to check out my previous Lego Blender video, which you should be seeing on the screen right now where I broke down the process on how I made this Lego Spider-Man animation. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.